What is something that people think is true about real estate that's completely false? It's easy. <laughs> it's not. You think people think it's easy? Yeah, a lot of people think it's easy. Really? Like, oh, you make this money, you get one big check. But they don't look at You got to pay expenses, insurance, fees. Then you got to pay taxes. So you got to take 20 or 30% out, put that up. And then, you know, it take 30 days to get a check in real estate. 30 to 45. Really? If something happens that 30-day period, yeah. you know, I moved. I, I had to set mm-hmm. up. Nah, I mean it. Yeah, yeah. Your whole check gone. So you got to start back over dipping the savings. People think, oh, you just got the money. No, if that deal falls that 30 day, if they go finance a car the day of closing, the deal's done. Really? Or some come up, the lender pull a different credit report, is gone. So a lot yeah. of people think, oh, it's easy and you just close and it's big money. You get a check, but you have to break the check down. And you also have to budget until you pay it again. Yeah. Because deals can fall. Yeah. Anything can happen to a client. You know, I had one client, uh, we were in the middle of selling her house. And she's still here. We yeah. still close. She was elderly. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had the, I had the house on the market. We were supposed to close. We had an offer. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to get her to sign. So it took me like two weeks. I'm like, what's going on? Where's she at? So me, I'm like, let me go and drive out here. It was in Shelby Township. Yeah. I drove. So I happened to see her son. He's like, oh, man, she had, had a stroke. She in the hospital. She ain't doing good, this and that. Mm. So we was up in there. I take the house off the market, get a new buy. I'm like, what are we going to do? She ended up being in the hospital, I think, about three months. So I had to keep the list and pending. But we end up closing when she got out, and she's still here. We still communicate. Wow. In that moment, if that was my only deal, what was I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the money. You're like, okay, cool. This is my client. You don't know what's going on. So Yeah. Can you talk about that experience a little bit? And kind of did that, did that teach you, did that give you a new perspective on real estate? Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. That's the first time I ever had to happen. And it was similar to what happened to my dad, wow. minus the stroke. And I'm just like, you know. It sounds like the same thing. What's the repeat? What's going on? And especially like when you know your clothes and you're like, okay, I'll count this money for. It. But when you got clients like that, like we'll call, I say, have you eaten today? We were cool. We built up a relationship. But to be in that situation, I had to put the realtor aside and become a friend. Mm. Because you had to make sure your client was okay mentally, physically before you can even do real estate. Yeah. So the calls and the check and to not remember nothing and it was a process because you want to be involved. It's, it's The money is out the window at that point. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure your client is good. So that was a scary point because they said she wasn't going to make it, and she did. Mm. So, yeah, it was scary. Yeah. And you come focused. Like, you you know, money out the window. Yeah. You, when you have for integrity you. and for my clients, yeah. yeah, I'm like, hey, I feel some type of way. I'm hurt. I feel bad, you know, so. Yeah. I want to give you props, man, being a leader. I know that's something we talked about over LinkedIn, too, just, you know, serving leadership and just – overall but like even in, in a story like that i can see because most people wouldn't feel that oh, way yeah, most people like, hey, would I'm be like oh i lost the dollar i lost the person yeah, and that's it yeah you but know what no, i'm saying I stay consistent because yeah. you never know when it can be you mm. that's how i always treat people if it was me well how would i want to be treated yeah because you just never know who you're gonna need yeah so i'm always careful what i say how you treat people yeah always. man i gotta say it's so interesting you know something i've learned about life and especially when it comes to talking to people who have accomplished things people who are successful what I always find is usually they're the most generous of people. Oh, yeah. They are. And I completely thought it was the opposite, man. Uh, yeah. I completely thought it was the opposite. How, how, what was that experience like for you? Well, I mean, like, I, I thought it was the total opposite, too, until you actually learn people. Mm-hmm. They take a moment to just, because sometimes you just walk in the room and be like, no, nah, but vibes don't lie. <laughs> vibes don't lie. Thanks. Energy Thanks. don't lie. You know a good person when you know them. Yeah. And when, you begin to, when I begin to learn more about energy and vibes and people, I'm like, oh, okay, I can rock with this person. At first, I'm just like, no, nah. because some people walk in with their nose stuck up, and then you, Facts. you already follow, like, well, they don't like me. Facts. But some people might just be having a bad day, but when you show True. up as yourself, people open up to you. Yeah. It changed the whole dynamic of the whole room. Yeah. When you walk in the room, you can read the whole room. Yeah. Man, a few books that, that changed my life in terms, of when it, in terms of dealing with people, of course, is the, the old-time favorite. Everybody knows it. Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and oh, Influence yeah, yeah. People. Um, but John C. Maxwell, man, everyone communicates, few connect. I'm not sure, have you read that book? I haven't read that one. Man, it's a, it's a phenomenal. Obviously, you know, John C. Maxwell is one of the, the spokespeople for leadership in general. Um, but it's just a powerful, powerful book, man. It, it's what helped me change that perspective about people. Because I realize a lot of times people aren't actually connecting with people. They're just communicating. Right. And that's something that John C. Maxwell talked about in the book. Um, but, of course, Personality Plus you know, um, and, and a few other ones. Was there any books for you that, that changed, that gave you insight on how to deal with people? And what, and what were those? Um, a few being, I think it is My Ex Want Me Back. Mm. And that, that topic, it's a good book. It's just about 
anything that's an example to you. Yeah, that could yeah. be drugs, that could be relationships, mm-hmm. alcohol. Um, and then Destiny, I think, by um, T.D. Jakes, I think. Destiny. Really? Yep, that one. And um, what is it? I think it's Michael Todd. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, um, relationship Goals. Relationship Goals. Mm-hmm. And um, those books, it, it, after reading those, they taught me some valuable about yeah. relationships. Communication, comprehension, yep. Mm. From your first home so to your most recent, what's been uh, something that you've learned? Not something that you've learned. What's been some of the biggest things that you've learned? To overcome the challenges. Really? Each each home you list or each home that you sell would come with a different challenge. Some are smooth transactions and some are not. But you always got to know how to navigate and how to treat the people. Mm. Um, your client is the reason you, you're there. Mm-hmm. There's so many relatives in the world. For them to hire you is just an honorary moment for herself. Um, yeah. And then, like I said, each person, don't, some people know they sold a home before. Some bought. So you just have to be delicate with each client. So it has taught me to work with some. Some you can't work with. You, it's okay to fire people. Mm. I fire clients. So you got to fire some yeah. before they fire you because sometimes it just don't work out. Some mm. people go in the mindset of they knowing it all when you're the professional. So sometimes it just don't work. Mm. So you learn something every day in real estate. Every yeah. day. Yeah. Every day. If you don't mind talking about that, you said this is an honorary moment when someone hires you, man. What separates realtor? What's what? What is a distinguisher that you would say is important for realtors to know when it comes to clients hiring them? Be professional mm. and be available. There's a lot of agents that don't answer the phone. There's a lot really? of agents that um, just in it for the money. You have to actually work for the client. That's how your business keep growing and growing and growing. Wow. Your brand is important. Mm. So a lot of agents, they just come in and just do whatever they want to do. Communication and comprehension is important. Mm. Always answer the phone. A lot of people don't, they don't answer the phone. A lot of realtors just like, hey, I'll call back. It's important and vital because you're working for that seller or that buyer. You mm. have to stay consistent. They can't. Work. That's why they hired you to work for them. They can't call the listing agent or another agent. So you always have to work for the client. Yeah, you have to always be available. Wow, always. You talked about firing uh, clients. What, when, when in <laughs> real estate, you know hey, it's okay to do this. <laughs> Probably about three years ago. <laughs> Probably about three okay. years ago, I had a client yeah. that was just crazy. You know, yeah, it's crazy. She was just adamant. Her, you know, her and the seller was just adamant. It, it, it's a lot of things that I'm not in control of. Mm. Say, for instance, the, the seller says he's not satisfied with something. I have to take that to the buyer and then the buyer back to the seller. I mm. can't say, hey, this is what she wants and this is what they want. But a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. They feel like they've known you or they know you. You should work harder for them. But at the same time, you're if you're a dual agent, you're working for the best of both parties. Yeah. So if they don't come to a common agreement, you have to allow them to come to a common agreement or they have to go to some further. Yeah. But I'm not experienced. And you know what I'm saying? Like law or court mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. But a lot of people will get you mixed up and say, hey, I don't feel like you worked hard for me. And it's um, like, you know, I can't change anybody's mind, a buyer or a seller. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Everybody's time is valuable. Mm-hmm. So you get a lot of people like that. And then a lot um, of people you just learn not to work with. Like, mm. some will feel like they can come to you or send you a house for a million dollars. I'm not showing you that without a pre-approval. What you right. mean? Why would we go look at the house and you don't qualify for it? Oh, I just want to see it before I, I apply. So we go look at it and you apply and you only approve for twenty six dollars, then what are we gonna do? Yeah. So they, they don't understand time. So a lot of them you do have to fire and understand time is valuable. Wow. Yep. Yeah. When did you come to that point of of understanding how much your time was worth in real estate? Um, probably my second year in. Mm. I ran around showing houses, showing houses here. Wasn't even sleep, just here, all the way, just rentals, everything, just going crazy with it. And then I'm like, hey, people didn't even qualify. 560 mm. credit score, 520, wow. no savings, no checking, no PDF uploads, wow. nothing, no income. So it taught me a valuable lesson because, like I said, you just learn as you go. Yeah. It's never taught, so I'm like, oh, no. What's the hustle of it? <laughs> hustle of course, it's day. selling houses, but what's the, the actual, I'm in real estate, I'm trying to make money. What is the hustle of it for someone who doesn't know who's looking to get into real estate? Because you just said it yourself, you're running around, you're showing houses. Most people would think, hey, you're you're doing it. The hustle is obtaining a pre-approved and building clientele. Mm. The hustle is having a database you can work with, having your system that you can work with, referrals and people to always keep something in your basket. Yeah. Don't celebrate one close and then say, hey, I made 10000 and 
you think you're going three months. You want to always keep something in your pipeline. You always want to keep clients. You always want to be professional. You always want to be up to date on content. You always want to be up to date with the market. You always want to be up to date with the value. You always mm-hmm. want to be up to date with everything. Because they looked at you as the professional. Yeah. You have to know. They come to you because you're experienced. Mm-hmm. You have to be up to date on everything. The laws and wow. literally everything. The Everything. Inspections, appraisals, lenders. Yeah. You work literally. Title companies. You have to work from A to Z. It's just not no, oh, I'm a realtor. I'm going to show you. We're in the contract. We're done. Yeah. No, it's inspections. It's appraisals. It's praying. It's, hey, you got this money put up. <laughs> yeah, you're saving. Yeah. This is a pre-approval. Wow. It's a it's a lot of steps that build the puzzle. Yeah. When when would you when can someone expect to to have that organized for them if they're if they're into if they're in real estate when when can someone expect to have all of that organized? I know everyone is different, but a year in an to agent or, or, or yeah, but having everything that you just said, having that down, and I can run with this as a buyer, or you mean as the agent? As the agent. Oh as yeah, the as the agent. agent. You got to come in with it. You got to come in with it. Because now it's a different time. You have so many realtors now. Everybody's working for the same cheese. Yeah. So it's a bunch of mice chasing the same trap. Mm -hmm. So what what makes you different? What's your brand? What makes you stand out? How educated are you? It's not about, oh, I'm just handsome or I'm pretty. I'm going to sell a house. Mm -hmm. You have to be educated with the whole package. You have to know your stuff. Mm -hmm. As an agent that's coming in or want to learn, come in ready. And also, if you're looking to get into it, Come in with some savings. Have money put up. Because mm. you're not going to just come in doing deals just right off the bat. Mm. They're going to go with somebody educated. They're going to want to know. You might get one or two deals, but you always have to be established. Yeah. Because if you don't get a check for three to four months and you're leaving your job, then what you going to fall back on? Right. You got fees. You got dues. You got you got a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you always want to have that cushion where you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. And then go ahead and jump. Wow. Yep. What are some telltale signs of, I and mean, I'm going to do this in terms of in three, seller, buyer, and agent, but what are some telltale signs of a bad buyer? Not answering the phone. Mm. They want a house, but they you call in and text it. Oh, I was here. I was there. They ain't trying to buy no house. Okay. Or you tell them, say, hey, you know, what's your credit score, this and that? Oh, I don't know. Usually the buyers that know they're ready to buy a house know their credit score. Most people that's ready for the process or know their credit score have been working on. Yeah. Those that don't know and that use credit karma, they're not ready. Wow. Tell tell signs of a bad seller. Inconsistent. They're not ready. They say one thing, they don't know what they want to do with the price. Mm. Um, and, and they're unsure. They're not ready. So you go meet with them, take the paperwork. Oh, come back in two weeks. Oh, come here. They give you the runaround. Mm. So that shows you that they're, they're not ready. Or one that's greedy, that want to overprice. You tell them, say, hey, your house is worth 300 Oh, I want to list it for 450 Let's put it for the max. No, you're gonna not going to make me look uneducated when I have what your area is going for in the same mm. comparables. You can't list it that high. Mm. Even though you go by what the seller wants you to do, you got to also be educated and say, hey, no, I'm not going to look foolish, you know. Yeah. With all this behind me, be like, hey, we're going to list it for 450 It's worth 100 Right. So, yeah. How do you avoid that runaround from both parties, the buyer and the seller? You should meet with them. Always give a free consultation mm. and, and energy. Yeah. You can do a lot over the phone and over email, but once you actually meet with your client, you'll know if they work for you. Yeah. I like to meet with my clients. I like to talk to them, you know, see where they're coming from, what they want. How, like, what's our time frame? You need to move in 30 to 60 days, or what's the rush? You got to relocate, somebody mm-hmm. pass. What's your plan after this? Do you have another house? You buying another house? Or, you know, yeah. what we're going to do? You always have to have a plan in play, even with a buyer. Yeah. Pre-approval is the first step to being serious. That way you know what you qualify for and the term. Yeah. Then we can get into how many bedrooms you want, where side of town you want, mm-hmm. what city. You know, without that main component, which is the key in the navigational system to closing, we don't have nothing. Wow. We can't just go and just look at houses for fun. Right, right. We're wasting time. So, yeah. And sellers don't want you in there anyway. You can't qualify. And you, how are you going to put off if you don't have nothing? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Tell, tell signs of a bad agent. Hmm. They don't answer the phone. They think they've been in the business 20 years or they got a smart mouth. Wow. Like you go through this with a lot of agents. And, and for us as realtors, we have to be respectful of everybody, mm-hmm. not just realtors, but everybody we work with, the community, the city, our buyers, our sellers. Mm-hmm. We all have to work together. A lot of them feel like they're on this pedestal and they're not. Mm-hmm. You know, lot, those are really bad agents. They just don't answer the phone. They don't know what they're doing. They just inconsistent. They're not working for the seller. Yeah. What's a piece of advice you would give to an agent who's struggling? Keep going. Mm. Don't quit. Just because you don't see that sale now, you're going to get 20, 200 no's before you get one yes mm-hmm. if you're selling. And then buyers just always push. 
Go on your list of contacts. Look at everybody you got. Make a list of those you know that's renting. Look at those that you know want to buy a house. Always keep your database going. Follow mm. up. Call them. Check on them. Hey, send a card. Yeah. You know, because you have a list of renters. If you know, mm. everybody know 20 people that's renting something. Talk to them. Hey, what's your credit score? I think you should buy a house. You're spending 12000 a month for rent or 12000 a year. Mm. 22000 your down payment. They got a uh, zero down uh, program or a $10,000 grant. What can we do so I can help you buy a house? Mm. Always be on guard. Always stay ready. So sellers can know an agent's too. What's telltale signs of a good buyer? They're pre-approved. Um, the agent is sending them off their offer with a pre-approval. Um, they show anxious. Like if you can see them at an open house, they really like the house. Um, mm. Buyers usually will call you like, hey, I want to see it. They're actively looking. They're ready. They're, they, they're ready. They're ready to go. Yeah. They're not just dragging their feet like, hey, I just want to look at everything in Detroit. Mm. Some of them just want to just be in the house, just see it. Really? And some of them just call and say, hey, my auntie used to live there. I want to see how it's remodeled. Like, no, we ain't. <laughs> they do. Surprisingly, wow. yeah. They wow. Do. So, so um, agents and buyers can know what's the telltale signs of a good seller. A good seller at the great price point. The house is listed at a good price point, um, where we have the thing now multiple offers to go over, so it's price to go over. Um, also, they include something like the appliances or a home warranty. The house is clean. That's a lot of times just clean this uh, uh, satisfied buyers. Wow. Moving and ready, just staging, like not bright, crazy colors, but sellable colors. Yeah. Neutral colors that open up the room, the decor. Mm -hmm. And just their aurora. Like you walk in a home, you can feel it's a home. You can go in one place, but oh, it's been hell in here. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Have you, have you actually walked into to places? It's oh, been yeah, dirty, a, a filth show. Has it been like, how do you, and then how do you go about like handling that in terms of trying to be respectful? Tell my this ain't it. I yeah. said, you got to square up and stop the bottom. I ain't helping you do this. Now. Yeah. But you know, we have to, and they really like it. But I'll just let them know, like, stuff to look for. Like, if they took care of the home, that's the one you want. Mm. But if it's just all rundown cabinets hanging, kids all, it's, no, you don't want that. It, kids. it can be that. Yeah. Man. Cabinets hanging, and it's a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely Floors, you, you walk in there, you know. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to ask you to ask the question I'm asking you. But so, so sellers and buyers can know what's the telltale signs of a good agent. Yeah. Or the, of a good agent, mm -hmm. they're persistent. They answer the phone. Um, they're good at emails. They're consistent. They're on a title work. Got you pre-approved. They're working in the best best interest of you. If you're a dual agent representing the buyer and the seller, they're working for both of you. They're not working more mm. for one side than the other. They're communicating mm. both sides. Say, hey, this is my client's offer. Hey, this is the one they accept. You're going back and forth working in the best interest of both of them. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard that terminology before, dual agent. So are there agents that just work with the sellers? Is there agents that just work with the buyers? Yeah, well, it, so everybody's not the dual agent. Yeah, a buyer's agent just represents solely the buyer. Mm. So a listing agent represents the seller, but a dual agent represents the buyer and the seller in the wow. same transaction. Wow. So both sides. What can be tricky, but yeah. Was I'm sure you've been both. Right. Well, how does that, what is the trickiness in terms of that? They then try and like the one side try to pull you more towards them knowing that yeah, you some people have that. Will. They'll say, hey, I know you for such and such, but it's business at that point. You can't, you don't mix business with pleasure. So you have to actually be a businessman. I'm representing, you actually sign a contract. I'm representing the seller. Yeah. I'm representing the buyer. I'm not going to tell the buyer something the seller don't want them to know. I can't tell the seller something the buyer. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. have a mutual where you can say, hey, I can do this and that or yeah. X, Y, and Z. You can't just go, oh, okay. They such and such. I know them. They friends. No, you can't do that. It's a yeah. boundary. It's a line between them. So. Got you. Got you. What's some of the craziest stories that you've had as a as a real estate agent that you can share legally? Man, it's crazy. <laughs> I have a couple of them. I, yeah. I've climbed through windows. Um, windows. Yeah, windows. The, I went. <laughs> client and I went to, all the way to Detroit to look at a house. Yeah. Detroit can be a different market depending on what side of town. I like Detroit. I don't want nobody mad. I <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Detroit. We went to go show the house. Mm. The lockbox code was on there. So I'm scrambling in the box. We ready to, you know, go look at the house. Client mm -hmm. excited. The key is missing from the box. Call the agent. They don't know who took the key, who the last seen it, what to do. Wow. The back window's open. The agent tells me. So what you think I did? I climbed through the back window. Yeah, yeah. And you had to show the house. So it, it, it's a lot of crazy stuff that go on in real estate. Man. It's Man. crazy. You're a grinder, bro. I'm grinding. Yeah, I grind. I grind. Whatever we got to do, yeah. I need to climb a tree. Yeah. I'm ready. Man, I respect that. Uh, I'm ready. I, I keep gym shoes and uh, dress shoes in the car because you just yeah. never know. You got to run. What you got to do? So. Right, right. Any other story that you can? Uh, I got to say, that's crazy. Back through the back window? Yeah. 
You gotta go Man. through back when I had Man. one. I had um investment property on the east side of Detroit. Yeah, that's different. I'm yeah. done with it. I, I went <laughs> to be safe. I don't want no more rental properties on the east side of I'm Detroit. I'm from that's the east it. side of Detroit too, so that's I was, I'm. <laughs> I'm telling. Listen, I'm telling. That's a different breed. A I human. can't. I can't wait to get to the next question. Then. I, I yeah. had clients. Well, it wasn't even clients. I had a rental. I went down there to check on it. You know. Cause the summertime I cut the grass, but then I'm like, hey, <laughs> nobody's in it. Let me just go. I'm cool. I had boarded the wonders. Right. And I was right. gonna rehab it. I go and there's a car in the driveway, it's a barbecue grill in the yard. I'm like, no, ain't nobody living. Nah. Knock on the door. Who is it? I said, no, I ain't I know. I know. That wasn't my choice of words. You know what I said. I'm like, no, nah, not here. I yeah. knock on the door, open it. Yeah, what up? I said, Well, I own this property and, and you and said, Oh, me and my kids in here, let me put on some clothes. Now, I had the oven heat, heating up the house. No furnace, none of that. Oh, boy. Comes outside, like, yeah, we've been staying here. The neighbor next door told me I can come and move in here because um, you only come cut the grass in the summer. Oh. I said, the neighbor don't own it. You, you're, you in here, like, oh, I can throw you something. I said, no, I want you out. Man, my kids in here. Go home with that. What I really wanted to say with him and the kids, I couldn't <laughs> say because, you know, you got to still be professional. Right. But it took me about three months to get them out. It was just months. they didn't show up in court. It was just a process. Then you had to pay a bail if it was like two thousand. Wow. Just to move a stove and one couch out. Wow. I had put new blinds, hardwood floors, cabinets. When I got in there, I had to redo the whole. It was just Man. furnace was missing. Oh, and his dog used it all over the basement. I had to clean up. It was crazy. Left clothes. It was. Wow. It was. It was crazy. If you don't ask, if you don't mind me asking, man, what's the the estimated amount somebody can expect if they have a situation like that? And have to deal with that. What well, how much can they expect to have to it spend just, just to get that back? It's, you might not ever get it back. Really? If they squatting and this don't have nothing. You can go, you know, take them to court and then go to court and small claims and garnish the wages. But if they're not working, then what you gonna do? So it's just a wow. it's hard. And you can call your cousins and go in there, but that's when you put your life involved and it's it just get wow. crazy. So wow. There's no point in me asking this. My rentals this will be close. Just yeah. my rentals will be close to me from now on. You Oakland see. County is a little higher, but <laughs> I I, they'll be where I can ride by at night and just yeah. check on. We're just saying. Yeah. Oakland County is a man. It's, it's, it's two worlds different. It's two worlds. It's two totally worlls different, different, man. Because yeah. they'll live in your house and tell you what you here for. Yeah. I mean, man was chasing my car trying to bust the back window out. It was crazy. Bro, wow. You and wow. my you was in my house, though. You yeah, know? But, yeah. You know. I gotta say, man, that's crazy. I was gonna ask it, which side oh, yeah. of the city do you prefer to? Oh see? yeah, well, if I get another rental, it'll be the west side, or I got the biggest guard dogs or pit bulls that's gonna man. live in. So is it just the environment that's that's different between the two? Is it the market that's different between the two? Like in terms of east and west, is, is it the market? Is it just the environment, or is it just overall what you've noticed? Like this is the overall what I've noticed: the demographics, yeah. the mindset. Man, I think it's just overall. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's some, I'm going to get me wrong. Some east side is cool. Some people like, hey, okay, they good. Some west side ain't too good. You know, some, you let me lock, let me move it, let me. Most definitely. Put the car in the ground when I run in the store. But, you know, it's different. So. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. But if you could go back, if you had to give yourself a piece of advice if, in terms of in real estate, if you had to go back and do it again. And what's a piece of advice you would, you would tell yourself? Hmm. Stay focused. And make sure that the brokerage that you pick is the brokerage for you. A lot of them will be out to get what they're getting. And that might be monthly fees, desk fees, or whatever. But they don't operate in the personal development of you. Mm. Of course, you're your business and your your own entity. But they don't offer any trainings, any, hey, you haven't had a sale this month. Hey, uh, what's your goal? Or meeting with staff or have an actual office hub where you can be competitive and say, hey, I'm going to sell three houses. Mm. You know, you actually being encouraged by yourself at home with a, a board. So if you're at yeah. home drinking every day, you might not get it done. But right, right. Have a brokerage that actually stand behind you and want to see you win that actually have done it yourself mm. over my years of experience. Wow, man. What do you enjoy most about real estate? The clients and selling home. I knew you was going to say I do. I knew it's the houses. It. It's the house. I mean, the money is good, but at the end of the day, without the clients, you don't have no money. Yeah. Each client brings something different. Like, I'm still cool with a lot of them. We hang out or we'll call and check in or they'll send referrals. So that's my database. Out of all of my years, I probably advertised once. Everything been business, uh, referral wow. based. Wow. I got to say, man, it sounds to me like your motivation is money, wealth, family, but your reason for doing everything is people. People, yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Because the so money going to come. 
yeah. money gonna come. Yeah. You just gotta treat the people right and be around right. the right people for the money to come. Facts. You can sell houses all day, but if you're not around the right people, you ain't gonna make nothing. Yeah. You just chasing the money, you're not gonna get the clients. Yeah. Client or seller and a buyer want somebody that's working in the best interest of them. They want somebody that's gonna navigate and sell and work for them mm -hmm. in the best interest. They don't want somebody to just, hey, I'm here, okay. I'm getting this percentage. Oh, this is what I'm making off your house. Right. Thank you for hiring me. Right. They want somebody that's going to be there, show up for them, and be there. Like a lot of them have events, invite me to their children events. They want a realtor, a lifelong friend. Mm. Some people build just checks. I build relationships. Yeah. So it's, it's lifelong. So Man, you've probably got some great relationships oh, with yeah. people, man. Yeah, we hang out, yeah. Yeah. Some of, some of the ones I ain't cut off, but yeah. Was that was that uncomfortable for you at first? Well, having having those, oh, you, you come from tax background, but having those relationships with different people and seeing how, how much they wanted it to be long-lasting, and it's not just I sell this and I'm done with it. Was that something you were expecting, or was that something that kind of was a serendipity to, to what you do? I wasn't expecting it at all. I was, you know, at first I'm like, okay, I'm going to see them be a relationship. But when you actually build those relationships, they show up for you and you show up for them. Yeah. It's like, dang, I really like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's bigger than just a check. You know, you get in and making good money, but at the same time, money going to go. Yeah. These same people are still in your life. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, my aunt looking for a house. They send you the same people back to you, referral after referral, and it, it just becomes, it's, it's good. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I know we talked about Bynum and Ward, the dancing realtor brand, man. If you don't mind talking about that, what made you want to go ahead and start that, do that, and, and continue with that? Because I, I do have to admit this. Seeing you over LinkedIn, when I first saw you, first connected with you, it was because of the videos right, that you yeah, had about dancing that, yeah. after houses that you sold. And after meeting you in person, you really are a grinder. Because I used to see those videos at least two or three yeah. times a week. You know what I'm saying? So the dancing realtor brand, man. Talk about that. I started that because um, selling a house or closing a house is a big accomplishment. Mm. Especially in the African-American community. I celebrate that because so many people are renting or comfortable on Section 8. They never grow. So to actually teach, teach it and see people live this and actually get the keys to their own home, it's a celebration. Not yeah. a moment you take lightly. We celebrate champagne or your choice of drink, TVs, whatever I have to do to show that we made it. Because a lot of people live without, like you said, just with mm -hmm. a business. Faith is something that we got to see when we don't see it. Yeah. A lot of them don't have that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, celebrating and My dad always danced. He was always the life of the party. Yeah. I initiated that and added that with it. I like to dance and celebrate life. 90% mm -hmm. of the time you won't see me mad. But when you see me mad, you better just be like, okay, he mad. Yeah. But I like to enjoy life. Life is... You never know when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. So I like to celebrate life in each moment. I like to be a positive brand. And believe it or not, I get a lot of um, inboxes on LinkedIn and Facebook say, your videos inspired me. Keep mm -hmm. dancing. That made my day. Or can you dance to this song? Or, hey, can you come to fly out here to Texas and we hang out? I built wow. a lot of relationships just off of that and that video wow. making somebody day. So yeah. It's my brand. I, I enjoy it. Like, Man, what made you just the dancing in, in general? Was that something you learn from having that marketing background that you just wanted to distinguish yourself from everybody I else? I always was dancing. Yeah. When I was younger, I was dancing. i just get out and dance and park the car and just dance. Yeah. Like, hey, let me incorporate this with real estate. Because once we close, you see people that close, they get a gift they don't hear from a realtor. Or they just go to a closing table, that's it. I want mine to be a lifelong relationship because these are people now, you built a relationship that can always be a part of your life, your business, your culture. Yeah. You celebrate it, they'll send other people. It's about breaking the cycle, breaking the chain. Mm -hmm. You just stop at one. They say, hey, I forgot about me. So yeah. the dancing is something that we'll always remember. It's always on social media. And it's me, my brand. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, I'm, I'm, we're going to dance. Yeah. If it's out of state, wherever. Yeah. Countertops, couches, whatever. We're <laughs> we doing yeah. it. Front porches. So. Yeah. Man, I respect that. And I got to say, even if that wasn't a marketing uh, switch, that was genius. Sad. There's a, nobody does that. I, and, and I get that a lot. Now that you said it and a couple of people said it last past year, I'm like, that was genius. I yeah. never thought of like Absolutely. making it a brand. A lot of people 100%. like, hey. And believe it or not, my clients now, when we close, they say, hey. Dance. What we did? Yeah, you didn't get in my dance. <laughs> They'll get mad. Like, oh, no. That's part of the brand. I want my dance. Yeah. They say, you getting in it or no? No, I want you to do it. I'm getting in it. But they look forward to it. They're like, I came to you because I want to dance. Yeah. I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. Some days my legs don't be right, but I got to do it. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, nah, I respect that, man. Great book. I'm not sure if you read it. Contagious by uh, Jonah Berger. Okay, it's a yeah. phenomenal book. It talks about why things catch on. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a marketing book, and, man, it's it's phenomenal. Just in, in the stories that it explain. But that's where why I say 
that dancing is it is genius it's, like thank truthfully you. um but so i can understand is the dancing worlds are separate from bynum and ward is that your company is that Bi- bynum and ward is the company i worked at years ago okay um, i've left there i've worked at a couple of brokerages but they don't work for me you have to figure out what works for you got you um i have some couple of things in the work now yeah. but um i'm at powell real estate now in birmingham Mm. Um, it's pretty good, but it was never associated with there or any of the brokerages. It was just me personally in the brand that I want to represent yeah. as the dancing realtor brand. Like George is the, um, traveling dancing realtor. Yeah. If I'm flying down showing houses closing, you got to add something for, you know, it's just like slutty vegan. You want to try the food, mm-hmm. you going down there right, to buy a right. house. So yeah, it's just attached to me. That's my brand. 